Hello and welcome. My name is Tyler Bourne. I'm the lead concept artist working at Brush Sauce Studio with Tyler Edlin. Welcome to the first episode of Fundamental Fridays, I think is what we're going to call it. Every couple of weeks, we'll have one of these more real time, slightly less scripted sessions going over some of the art fundamentals. Today, we're going to look at how to indicate things like textures and materials when sketching. So today I'm going to be working digitally, and you can too, or you can use something like a ballpoint pen or a felt tip, but we're looking at rendering using line today. The approach we're going to use is similar to using materials or textures in 3D software. By the way, some of you might call me out on this. I know materials and textures are different things, but today I'm just going to clump them together and use them interchangeably. But in 3D, you have a flat image that gets wrapped around a 3D form or a mesh. And we can do the same thing when sketching as well. So let's draw a rectangle and this will be our material. Let's look at regular hatching to start with. And we can slowly taper it off. So it starts off dense and then fades away. The reason we're doing this is because we'll put most of our detail in a focal point and we can fade out as we move away from that focal point. This helps keep the viewer's focus where we want it to be. And if you were to have the same amount of detail across a whole sketch, it'll actually flatten out that image. So we're practicing that concept on our flat material here, getting used to slowly fading out. You want to practice that tapering off because it doesn't, you can't do it as like a straight line, like this is all hatched and then there's nothing here. Uh, you want it to slowly um, sort of fade out, right? Once we have the flat texture, we're essentially going to apply that to some sort of three-dimensional form. When we've got a three-dimensional form, what you'd want to do is apply uh, contour lines to it so that we understand what the 3D form is doing, right? So something like this here tells us more about this, this blobby shape that I've created. You can also do it in the other direction too, almost like this is an actual grid that is wrapping all the way around this form, right? So there's sort of two axes going. There's, there's this one here that then like wraps around and then there's the one in the other direction as well, right? So that's what you'd want to do with the three-dimensional form. And so once we have those, those um, contour lines dictating what the 3D form is doing, we can then apply our texture to it. Or in this case, we're just going to be doing the hatching. So first pick out where your light source is coming because we're going to be applying this to shadows. So if the light source is kind of coming mostly down, you'd get a terminator, which is the point where the light and the shadow sort of meet. Like if you've got a ball and your light is coming down, it's going to, there's going to be an angle somewhere on the edge where the light stops hitting it, right? This is like light beams. There's going to be an edge where the light stops hitting it and that's the terminator line. So on this form, it would be something like this here. If the light's coming down, mess this up here. So it would kind of come down, hit an edge somewhere around there. And then it would also create a cast shadow. Add some contour lines so we know what's going on. So the reason I bring up the contour lines is because when applying this texture here, we can use those contour lines to tell us the direction of how to apply this texture. So notice that the edge here is curving around. It's very circular. And we can use, when applying our hatching, we can use this to our advantage. If we follow these lines, it's going to further um, indicate to us what this form is doing. So um, again, I'm going to be applying this to the shadow side. And the reason I'm doing that, there, there's no real right or wrong, but in my opinion, if most of your object is going to be in light, if you leave that not rendered, uh, just like, you know, leave it, uh, there's there's less actual mark making in the light side you're just making your life a little bit easier because there's less to draw basically so by keeping your details in the shadow at least for line drawings you know there's especially painting you can totally flip that on its side you might want your details in the light and no details at all in the shadow but uh in today's demo at least i'm going to be doing details in the shadow or or uh 
indicating material in the shadow side. So we want it to follow our contour lines. So I'm just going to be doing straight hatching here. And again, I want my focal point somewhere around here. So that's where this is going to be. And then I'm going to slowly taper that off as I get further and further back. So notice here I'm starting to spin it a little bit because I'm thinking that there's contour lines here as well. So you'll notice that over here on this side, my lines are kind of going this way and over on this side, they're starting to go that way, the opposite. And that's because I'm thinking uh, of this here, which I haven't actually drawn in, but we can think of these here. And so notice that I'm doing a couple different rows and we'll get our darkest shadow right at the terminator. And then there's a second row here where I'm not going quite as heavy and that's because there'd be a little bit of bounce light down at the bottom there. So I'm actually um, letting it get a little bit lighter as it gets closer to the floor. And then maybe this is an imperfect, uh, an imperfect surface. So we do get a, maybe a little bit above the uh, Terminator as well. And then I'm thickening up this bottom line here because we would get some ambient occlusion there, which is where the, um, so there is bounce light, but bounce light would hit the ground, go up and light, lighten up this section here right as i said but as it would basically keep bouncing and eventually there'd be no more light reaching the very corner you see this in a lot of folds and that kind of thing so i'm just adding a bit of a darker line there and then we could do the same thing how i said you know there's if this grid was also on the flat ground plane it would be something like that so when applying uh cross hatching to our ground plane we could do that as well we're just going to do a quick and dirty version here but we could do something like this And that's our blobby form there. So as I said, I'm keeping the details in the shadow. The other thing you could do though is, as I said, I'm leaving the light side sort of more just plain white. You could do something uh, in between where you could have like really bright highlights be white. You can have the really dark shadows be pure black and then sort of do like some detailing in the mid-tones. Um, you see that, um, Modern day James used to do this and I quite like this technique. If he was doing a box, um, a lot of times in rendering you have what's called a one, two, three read. So you have your side that's most in the light. You have your shadow side, which is the number three side. And then two is normally in the light, but it's uh, at a less of an angle. So if the light's coming down like this, it's mostly hitting the top of it. And then this, the number two side is in the light, but it's not getting as much light as the number one. And what modern day James does, which I quite like, is number one in the light, don't do anything to. Number three in the shadow, go full black. And then what he does is he um, hatches the number two side. And I quite like, I'm just going to flip this, make it easy. There you go. 
But even here, you see that I'm doing the same thing as I did here with this one. I'm actually following the contour lines here because a box would have contour lines like this, right? Something like that. So I'm having my number two side when I'm adding the hatching, I'm having that follow my perspective, following the form of the cube. Again, you don't have to do this, but I think visually it helps reinforce the idea that you're following the contour of the object. You could also do it um, vertically, right? Because again, if I did the other side, it would do something like that. So I could have chosen to hatch this way instead. And you can also do cross hatching, of course, too. So um, if I were to add a second option here, I could add the cross hatch as well. Do something like that. And now I've got both of those axes reinforcing the form of the object. If we want to look at a more practical version of this, we could look at, say, something like a, um, let's call this like a, a bug leg or something like that. They have like two, I don't know what their feet look like. They have two like little, just it depends on what the insect is. But we could do something like this here. Let's call that a bug leg. It's a little sloppy, pardon me. Um, but you can see that this section here is basically a cylinder coming towards us this way, right? So the contour lines would do something like that. And then this section is sort of doing, not the opposite necessarily, but it is going in a different direction. So the contour lines now are this way, right? So if we wanted to shave this with cross hatching, we could indicate that by having a sh shadow line come here, we could do this, but we don't have to add those contour lines. Essentially, that is what I'm going to be doing. But by having our shadow go this way, that helps to reinforce to the viewer what that form is doing because it's reinforcing that, that direction, right? And then once we get to this side, it would be going the, the other way. And then this way again. Right. Something like that anyway. Okay, so now let's look at um, doing the same sort of thing, but with a different material now. So we can do our little rectangle again, but this time let's try some sort of like rock form or something like that. Let's try, uh, not exactly sure what I'm gonna do here, but just something kind of rocky. And uh, we'll see how this goes. Be sort of random with this. And so on this left side, I'm going to be more dense here and then more open here, right? As I grade out, grade eight out. And what I'm doing in this texture is <laughs> I'm sort of doing all of this within my texture itself. I'm thinking there's this is sort of like a bumpy, rocky surface. So I'm thinking there's little 
uh, top surfaces and then there's something like a side surface and um, so this is a number one and then say number two on the left side and number three on the right side so my number three sides will get the darkest shading so maybe this one is the number three side and then two is getting shaded as well but not quite as much and so I'm doing I'm applying the idea here a bunch of little times into my uh, my form as well it's sort of like a micro version of what we just looked at and I could probably be I probably don't have to get that detailed with it you know I could probably be a little bit more random with my hatch marks as long as I'm hatching in sort of random directions it'll look more kind of chaotic so um, you'll see sometimes people do um, like omnidirectional hatching where they'll they'll kind of go randomly in random directions with their hatching and typically that shows um, some sort of like chaotic surface like a, like an eroded rusty kind of kind of surface so you can you can let the randomness help you out to a certain extent and then you would fade that out too Clusters. And grading, gradating it out slowly. Something like that. So we can then apply that to some sort of form as well. So something like that. So same thing, I'm going to choose somewhere along this side where my light is going to end and my shadow commences. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be affecting my silhouette because this is a rocky surface. I don't want this to fit in too perfectly to what my form just did. It's actually going to affect um, you know my, my silhouette itself and again if you know 3d going back to the idea of, of applying 3d methodology here um, this is like a displacement map right our texture or our material is effectively um, displacing the original um, form of the object so now i'm applying the same idea that i just did with sort of the um you know, I'm, I'm doing sort of micro uh, three sides to these things. So some of it gets some dark hatching, some of it gets less hatching. Some of it I'm trying to leave pretty, uh, pretty open. The sides that catch the most light here. And what's going to happen is um, as the light with a rocky surface, light is, is going to bounce around quite a bit. So we're not going to get quite uh, a clean line in the terminator like this like i was doing here i was adding a few like little imperfections so it doesn't add uh, so it doesn't cut off just 100 percent light and shadow that's going to happen even more with the with a rocky surface because there's more bounce there's you know lights hitting it at odd angles um, so it's going to create more of a chaotic transition and what that means for us when we're sketching it is it um, there's sort of a like a slower tr gradation from shadow to light but same thing as i go backwards if my focal point is here as i go backwards i want to taper off the um the texture i want to do what we did here right Getting some weird marks. My uh, my stylus feels kind of sticky today, so I'm getting some weird marks here. Now, as you can see, this could could take a while. <laughs> so, as again, like one of the 
the benefits to doing the gradation and only doing this mostly in the focal point is it saves time. If I have to apply what I'm doing here to the whole surface, it's going to take me forever to do that. So it's, it's, um, it's good for multiple reasons. One of which is uh, of course, fo focal point, which is sort of the more, um, legitimate artistic reason for doing this. And the other reason is because I don't want to spend all day just rendering rocks, you know, I want to move on with my life a little bit. Try out some, some larger chunks of rock, maybe. Play around with scale a bit. So here I'm starting to slowly taper off these forms a little bit, getting a little bit um, less heavy handed with it. Just trying to indicate some stuff, but not go too, too crazy. Here's the other thing. Back here, we've got it all smooth. We don't want that. As we taper off, if we can keep up that silhouette breakup, the rocky surface is affecting our silhouette. That is really going to do a lot of work. I don't even have to finish any of this really. And you can tell that that material continues off to the back. And we get that just from seeing the way the silhouette is affected. So that also really helps us to just kind of indicate at some of this, especially as we go back in space. Of course, some of you, um, might be thinking this already, but you might have seen this. I mean, a lot of people have taught this, but I learned this from my uh, old instructor at CJMA, Peter Hahn. So shout out to Peter. But um, he's certainly not the only person that that teaches this kind of stuff. His students started drawabox.com, so you might have seen it there as well. But as you can see, see I've kept all of my darks here in my focal point and around the terminator of the light. And then just kind of tapering off as we go back. So again, as we get some ambient occlusion at the bottom here, we can do that. And then of course I haven't actually drawn this yet, but if the light is coming down, we would get, you know, some cast shadow there too. Being a little bit, you know, looser with this, trying to um, make the demo quicker, but <laughs> it's one of those things where trying to go fast to sort of demonstrate fairly quickly, but also the quicker I go, the worse job I do. <laughs> so maybe that's uh, maybe that work makes it for a worse demo. So, but hopefully you'll get the idea here. And then I'm actually this is pretty subtle, but I'm doing the same thing with my shadow too. I'm having a bit more cast shadow around my focal point. As you can see, there's some more lines here. They're a little more dense and then I kind of taper off towards the back as well. So same kind of idea. So we can do the same thing with, uh, say more practical, uh, uses because admittedly, you know, you're not going to necessarily apply this to a um, whatever this is supposed to be who knows what it is it's just like a rocky uh, blob <laughs> right some sort of chunky uh, nougat type type thing so what if we did something like a stone or a brick do 
I'm just going to give you a rough idea here. I'm not going to take spend too much time, but you know, some sort of like cobblestone or something like that. Um, some sort of like brick texture kind of thing. Uh, what if we did that? Right, so on. I'm not going to do the full thing. We could do some sort of... Um, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do here. Maybe some sort of like walkway or something. So if this is a walkway going back in space, trying to add like uh, some sort of border. So there's like the almost like a crown molding type thing to an outside. Don't know if that makes sense, but Let's do something like that anyway. So again, I'm going to keep most of my details here at the front where I want the focal point. And then as we fade back, we don't have to get to, you know, they can be more kind of indicated. Let's do something like this here. We don't even have to show full, um, full bricks anymore. You know, you could just sort of do some of the, the intersection type things. And then up here we get some more individual pieces. Oops. Show some imperfections here. Maybe, um, Maybe this stuff is falling apart. Who knows? Have some broken, broken pieces here. Again, now I'm just sort of messing with the silhouette just to sort of help show that this is um, some sort of stone. You know, there's often many, uh, many imperfections with stone. We can add some like cracks and stuff. But as we move back in space, we don't have to do nearly as much. We can sort of get uh, more indicative rather than actual detail. I'm going to add a little bit of um, line weight here. Again, I want, I almost want there to be two columns here that are a little bit more raised. Like there's, if this is the top view of our path, there's sort of like, there's sort of like a border to it. Maybe it's like different color stone or something like that. I feel like I've seen this before, maybe on like, um, uh, driveways maybe or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe this isn't a thing. I 
And of course, stone does have like little speckles, so we can add that kind of stuff to you. Might get some pretty strong ambient occlusion here in between the stones. But as you can see, as I move backwards, we do less and less of that. Okay. Let's try one more. All right, so let's do something like, um, sort of similar. Let's do some sort of like dock type system. Just going to do like a rough out here. But see, if I want to do a dock system, or not a dock system, just, you know, a dock, planks of wood, we'll do some that are sticking out. I want this to be sort of uneven, right? Sort of, uh, wood's always fun when it's very imperfect and, you know, old, uh, old creaky wood kind of thing. Some holes in it, maybe, or, uh, like little, um, what are they called when there's like uh, like little nuts in it? Little imperfections. That's always fun. So we can do that kind of thing. Indicate some of the individual little um, you know wood grains. A little heavy-handed here. I think uh, I'll go in and add some wood grain with a smaller uh, with a smaller brush later, actually. And so the first few we can do as um, individual planks, but what we'll do is as we move back, we don't need to show the individual planks. We can just start hinting that, you know, there's, there's lines here. Kind of thing. We don't even have to go all the way through. Let's just do, you know, a little hint at a line here. But again, the, what will really sell it is sort of the imperfect silhouette that we had set up in the other examples here. Sorry if you hear a little sound there, my uh, headphones are hitting the microphone, so apologies there. So, and we can even indicate some things like uh, maybe there's some nails or something in this. Presumably, you know, there's, there's probably, we should have maybe cut open an area for some sort of... Um, you know, if this is like a dock or something, maybe there's some sort of leg or something. That cuts through all this. And then, I don't know, presumably there'd be like a rope or something there. We could do something like this.
and then uh, yeah, we can indicate some uh, some little nails maybe here and there. But so you can see that um, as we have it at the front, I'm gonna again, I'm kind of saying my focal points at the front here. As we get to the back, we really can just very loosely indicate that um, that material and that texture kind of continue, right? And we we actually get a lot just from the um, the silhouette, and we understand that it is continuing back, even though we're showing less. And again, just to <clears throat> sort of reinforce the thought, if I were to add the same level of uh, detail across the board, it would actually make the image look flatter. So by having this, we add uh, more visual interest to an image. So again, just to recap everything, if you wanted to uh, give this a, a shot, remember that when we're sketching things, we are creating 3D forms, right? Um, I've kept most of the same form throughout today. Um, even, you know, the stones and the wood dock kind of thing, those are basically just rectangles that are going back in space this way. And I am applying, and I am applying a um, texture to that. I'm essentially wrapping that rectangular cube in some sort of material. We can do the same thing with uh, regular hatching or cross hatching. So you want to think of your material or your texture as a flat image. And you want to practice gradating that out, tapering off as you go back. And um, the reason you want to practice that is so that you've got a nice smooth transition. So it doesn't look super harsh as you transition out. And that will help once you apply it to the 3D form, you can slowly taper it out so that you can focus on a focal point and then um, less detail in areas that are not our focal point. So uh, I hope that helps. I hope. Um, you have fun with this. It's definitely fun to apply. I think that this really levels up your drawing very quickly. Um, you know, even if you do it pretty quick, like today's demo was quite uh, quick, but I hope that it gets the point across. And um, I think you'll definitely have a lot of fun sketching. It, uh, it's very fun to sort of hit the sketchbook with this kind of stuff and just play around with things. So um, best of luck, have fun and definitely enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you had fun. Of course, do let us know if you enjoyed this idea of Fundamental Fridays. Big thank you to Tyler Edlin for having me back on the channel. I co-run the group mentorship with Tyler over on his Patreon. We meet twice a month. We'd love to have you. So if you're interested, the link will be in the description below. I also cover a lot of art and design basics over on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested, I think we'll have the link to that in the description as well. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye.